So a lot of people have a lot of dreams and that is buying a piece of land and building a house, but it can be a disaster. Buying a piece of land, if you don't know what to do, what to look for, can cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. So here's a few tips and a couple of things that you really need to look for and pay attention to that will save you a lot of money. Number one is walk the property. Regardless of the property, walk the property. Just when you think it's gonna be a good deal, you just never know. There may be somebody that encroaches upon the property. There may not be a clear title on the property. There may be someone else's fence on the property. There may be a graveyard on the property. Walk the property, always walk the property. And when you're walking the property, you wanna make sure that you look for signs of water. Look for signs where water has been settled. Water will settle whenever it lifts grass, hay, weeds, and then it sets them back down. Typically, wherever it will set them back down, you'll see a low spot. So it's okay to get down a little bit, look at the land, look at the topography of the land, and think like water. Water takes the path of least resistance. Where's that water gonna flow? Is there low spots? Is there pooling? What can you do to fix that and listen sometimes you'll buy property and it's on a busy street and you think you're getting a good deal because it's on a busy street so you just have to know you're going to hear sirens you're going to hear ricky's radio you're going to hear jimmy's truck blasting down the road and you have to ask yourself can you live with that oftentimes a lot of people can't and that will lower the value of your property and here's the reason why it makes it less desirable the less desirable the property the less the increase in the value you're going to see. And of course, everyone must consider what you do for a living. If you need high-speed internet and you're way out in rural areas, you may have to look at a secondary means for internet. One is called Starlink, and Starlink would allow you to basically connect to satellites for a higher internet speed connection. When it comes to looking at the land, walking the land, you also want to make sure that you don't get any disturbing facts after you've already purchased the property. And the best way to do that is talk to your neighbors, walk through your neighbors. It doesn't matter if they're 100 feet apart or 600 feet apart, walk around, talk to the neighbors, let them know that you're looking to buy this parcel of land and what your intentions are on the property and just kind of feel them out. How long have they been living on the property? Did they know the previous owners to the property? And don't be afraid to ask that owners, your neighbors, your future neighbors, what do they think about the area? What do they think about the location? What do they like most about it? Is there water? Is there flood? Ask those types of questions. Now, when you buy property and land, it's surveyed. They do a survey on the property and they look at basically what's called the meets and bounds of the property. They drop pins. Sometimes a property can be shaped like a hexagon, octagon, stop sign, you name it. But they'll do a survey on the property and that survey is typically recorded at your county seat. However, if the survey is old and you can't get a good clear copy or a good understanding of that property through that survey, you can simply pay for a new survey. Now they'll run anywhere from 500 to upwards in the thousands of dollars depending on the size of the land and the topography of the land. Meaning that if that surveyor's gotta spend a couple of days out there just getting around into the property, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than say a residential lot. Now the benefit of having a survey and knowing that survey is not just so you know where the property boundaries are, you'll also know if anybody is encroaching upon your property. If somebody say on the back corner of your property has been mowing it for three years because the previous owner never really went back there you need to know if that person is doing that because listen that person may be cutting that grass have a fence on your property and they may not even know it because they bought the property that way but it's informative and important to know your meets your bounds your property lines so you can make sure that you explain to anybody that that is your property and you know basically where your property ends and where it begins now it doesn't really matter if your property is wooded has trees on it a creek or whatever it may be one of the most important things you'll want to do when buying a piece of property is to know is it in a flood zone is it in flood zone a b c x and there's different variations of a flood zone but it's not just for people that live on the coast or say live near water. Believe you me, I've sold many of properties where the land is in a flood zone or it's in a designated flood zone, just about a swamp area, and you never would know it if it's been three weeks and no rain. Now, 
course, the purpose of knowing that is to know where you can and can't build. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to buy a piece of property and a portion of the property or a lot of the property be in a designated wetlands area. At that point, it's next to impossible to get that property buildable. You have to go through the Corps of Engineers and you can't so much as put a drop of gravel on that property if it is a designated wetlands area. And of course, how you find that out is you get the property surveyed, the surveyor will tell you everything you need to know about the property. You can also look up the FEMA maps, the FEMA flood maps, F-E-M-A, those FEMA flood maps will show you based on that property address and that demographic area what flood zones that property is in. So another thing that is really important to look for is title. You want to make sure you get a title policy on the property. A title policy on that property is going to let you know where the fences are, is there any encroachments on the property, are there any recorded encroachments on the property, and most importantly it will protect you against that. So look, I can tell you from voice of experience, don't sit down in an ant pile. That's never fun. But in all seriousness, you want to make sure that the property will perk. Is it on city water? Is it on city sewer? They'll usually disclose that and you can find that out. And once again, the survey will give you a lot of that information. The previous owner will know that information. If it's listed in the multiple listing service with a real estate brokerage company, you can know that information. But this is why that's so important because if that property has to have a septic system on it, it has to perk. So if the property won't perk and there's no way for that system to work and percolate through the ground, just like I'd mentioned before in a video, you, like a coffee maker, it has to percolate. So if when it goes from the house into what they call the field lines, if it won't absorb through the soil, that soil would not absorb those field lines. And what's coming through those field lines is basically what they call black water and brown water, your sewer water then you can't put a septic system on that property. Now, when it comes to water, if you're down here in Louisiana where I am, the water table's real high. That means you don't have to dig very far and you'll hit water. So it's not uncommon to dig two or 300 feet and hit water and have a well that will last for decades. What's really cool is down here, there's no rock. The negative side is when you're not down here, there is rock. And I'm not talking about rock and roll music or Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I'm talking about rock in the soil. So if the property has to have a well, you have to know wherever you're living, where I'm from, for example, Nashville, Tennessee, is very rocky, lots of rock. You can't dig two feet without hitting rock. So what does that mean when you go to dig a well? Well, you're gonna spend a whole lot of money digging that well because they're gonna go through a whole lot of bits just to get through the rock to even adventure down to see if there is water available. Now, another thing to consider are these trees. These trees are 80 to 90, some of them are 100 feet tall. And to remove one of these trees, it's gonna cost you anywhere from 700 to $1,500. But I'm curious, have you ever purchased a piece of land and regretted it? Have you ever purchased a piece of land and thought, man, I wish somebody was there to help me do that, or I wish I'd had that advice? If so, please leave a comment below because we wanna know so you can continue to help me help others. So listen, the purpose of this video is not to freak you out or scare you, it's for you to do your due diligence and know that have it perked, will it perk? survey the land, talk to the neighbors. Is it a flood zone? Is it not a flood zone? If it's a flood zone, what's it gonna cost me? What is my insurance gonna run? And after all of that's done, buy the land. After you purchase the land, you can take your plans, prints, drawings to a bank and they'll give you what they call a construction perm loan. Typically, if you purchase a piece of property, you put 10% down, you've got 10% equity in the property, you can take that value to the bank, let them know, here are my plans. They will then give you what they call a construction loan to start the building process. And once you start the building process and the process is completed, they're gonna look at your plans and the land and they're gonna give that an estimated appraised value. After your home is complete, you go to a title company or an attorney, close on that transaction, and at that point, your payment typically starts 30 days later on a 30-year fixed loan and you've built your dream home. Thank you for watching.